like about working with Logan Raddick is that he's genuine. He's not afraid to be himself. He's got a great sense of humor, and Logan is also committed to learning about the Ohio Valley, and he's certainly not afraid of big stories. I became a journalist because I love telling stories, whether they're about the community or individuals. It's my job to present both sides of an issue so that hopefully you learn something new every single day. I'm 7 News anchor Logan Raddick, and I love reporting the news for the Ohio Valley. But first, 7 News has learned from several reliable sources that Wheeling Jesuit University fired many of their faculty members today. Well, Joe Biden is hoping that the third time is the charm. He unsuccessfully ran for the Democratic nomination for president in 1988 and 2008. But a lot of people know him as the former vice president, the running mate of Barack Obama. All new tonight at 10, sex trafficking has become a nationwide issue. But here in West Virginia, officials are seeing a disturbing twist. Thank you for joining us for 7 News at 10. I'm Logan Raddick. Another story we're closely following now at 6. Police in Richland Township need your help identifying the suspect in a theft investigation. Thanks for joining us tonight. For 7 News at 6, I'm Logan Raddick. Here's a first look at the suspect. Authorities say the man stole Milwaukee tools from Rural King at the Ohio Valley Mall. If you have any information on who this is, you're asked to call the Richland Township Police Department at 740-695-9543. 7 News is your local election headquarters. Polls have been open all day across the northern panhandle for several municipal elections. 7 News reporter Taylor Long joins us live in the studio with a full breakdown of what races you should look out for. Taylor. And I'm Logan Raddick. Manchin grabbed an early lead and held onto it all night long. The fight for this seat has been intense since Patrick Morrissey won the Republican primary back in May. We will have reaction from Senator Manchin in just a few minutes. After releasing a video last week, he had his first rally today. And today the focus was really on how he could be a counterbalance to President Trump. He was saying that he believes he's the best opportunity for a Democrat to unseat the incumbent president. Take a look at this. President Donald Trump is coming back to the Mountain State. The president will be in Wheeling on July 24th at a private fundraiser being held by Murray Energy CEO Robert Murray. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine and West Virginia House Speaker Roger Hanshaw will also be in attendance. Catherine, Senator Capito is currently serving as chair of the Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee. When she joined the Senate in 2015, Congress passed a five-year highway bill called the FAST Act. That bill increased federal dollars going to the Mountain State. It's now Congress's goal to draft and pass another long-term highway bill before September 2020, something Senator Capito has been working on for months. Well, the highway bill that we uh, reauthorize every five or six years is, is really the heart of the highway program in West Virginia. That's where all the federal funding comes from, uh, which is 80 to 90 percent of what uh, funding goes for our transportation. So it's important, the most important thing is to preserve that funding. Senator Capito has been working to make sure that the federal highway bill includes investments in West Virginia, especially when it comes to ensuring that bridge repairs are a top priority. Today, the Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee held a hearing focused on this bill. Senator Capito wants to make one thing clear. She says that something needs to be done about West Virginia's dilapidated bridges in order to avoid a catastrophe. We'll continue to keep you updated on this situation. Live in the 7 News studio, Logan Raddick working for you. It's official. The American Arena League Championship will be played right here in the friendly city. The announcement was made this afternoon. The Rough Riders will take on the undefeated Carolina Energy at West Bank or Arena next Saturday, June 29th. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. We'll have coverage of this matchup over the next week and a half to get you ready for game day. All new tonight, the Weirton Police Department would like to make residents aware that there are currently no fundraising campaigns going on. People are receiving scam calls for donations to help out local police departments, the FOP, or slain and wounded police officers. These charity scam calls are getting more and more common. Scammers will ask for money and are often pushy or aggressive. If you get one of these calls, do not donate money. Just hang up the phone. Meanwhile, the Brooke County Board of Education and the BDC are trying to sell the former Follinsby Middle School. The property was on the auction block Monday at 10 a.m., but by 10.30, no bids had been placed. Officials tell us that they opened the bidding at $700,000, but Superintendent Crook is confident that the board and the BDC will be able to find a buyer. 
Archbishop Lori made another significant announcement. He informed the community that he has put the Wheeling Charleston Bishop's residence up for sale. The house in Elm Grove, which was built between 1908 and 1910, was purchased by the diocese from the Lindsley Institute in 1963. It has served as the residence for the last four bishops of Wheeling Charleston. For more information, head over to our website, WTRF.com. Live in the 7 News studio, Logan Raddick working for you. Some sad news tonight. Boston Celtics legend and Ohio Valley native John Havlicek passed away today at the age of 79. Havlicek played 16 seasons for the Boston Celtics and won eight championships. He was also a three-sport athlete at Bridgeport High School. He was drafted by both the Boston Celtics and the Cleveland Browns, but after competing as a wide receiver in training camp, he decided to focus on basketball. The Bridgeport High School Gymnasium was renamed the John J. Havlicek Gymnasium in January of 2007. As Pittsburgh and the nation continue to mourn, organizations and people around the city are doing what they can to help. Since Saturday's tragedy, several blood drive events have occurred across the Steel City. And today, hundreds of people have made their way to PPG Paints Arena for the Central Blood Bank Drive hosted by the Pittsburgh Penguins. I, along with 7 News reporter Chelsea Withers, attended the Penguins Drive, and we both gave blood. In the face of darkness, the region showed how good will always prevail over evil. It's the fourth annual Nutcracker Village, and I was actually able to talk to Mark Nelson, who brought this event all together a few years ago. He's got 10 kids, his wife, and the help of his son-in-law, and right now they have 170 nutcrackers on display. The whole family gets together and, and they make these nutcrackers, and right here we have one from Harrison Central High School, the Husky. If I ever retire from news, this is the job I want, driving the doggy school bus. This looks like a ton of fun. Oh. And when I'm older and I have a dog of my own, I know who I will leave the doggy with to take to school. I mean, you can <laughs> gladly send him away. Hey, what fun! I would trust my dog's life in your hands, Catherine, and especially when you're at the wheel, right? Nobody is probably having more fun during the day than those dogs, though. Did you see how happy? Nobody they would were? have more fun than you. Probably not. <laughs> Live in the 7 News studio, Logan Raddick, working for you.